What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is episode 22 of our Blind Sun and Moon Let's Play. If you guys are enjoying the series so far, definitely hit that like button. And uh, if you are looking at watching a little more, a little more Geo in the future, hit that subscribe button. So. Uh, I haven't played in a while. It's been a couple of days for me. I was uh, at work the last two days, um, and so I'm back today. And so I, I wanted to look at my team and see what I got, and uh, and point out one thing. Thank you guys so much for all the love you're showing me in the comments section. One thing I want to point out is that this is a blind playthrough for me. I've done, I've worked really hard to avoid as many spoilers as I can, and there have been a few spoilers in the comments section. And I know you guys mean the best, and I'm just asking as a favor, maybe try and, and, and keep the spoilers a little out of there, because the whole point of this is is to sort of explore and experience things myself. Um, and one of the things that was brought up to me, and this is a spoiler, so if you're trying to avoid spoilers on your own, please skip forward about 30 seconds or so. Someone mentioned to me, this is the spoiler, someone mentioned to me that the only way to evolve um, uh, Coop here is to have it be a female Salandit, and I have a male Salandit. So this Pokemon's not going to evolve for me. Uh, fortunately, I've seen the evolution, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, maybe I'll put a little, a little start, stop, end time jump for people who wanted to avoid that spoiler. But don't worry, the spoiler is gone now. Uh, we're going to head back in here and adjust my team a little bit, just to just to run around with some things. Let's see what we got here. So. I don't really want. Uh, we've got Rabombi and already, and Rabombi's great. I love Rabombi, but um, I think, given the current situation of who I have on my team, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take Coop out. Nope, not putting Rabombi back in. Uh, I definitely want to keep Charge a Bug. I love Charge a Bug. He's just so powerful. I mean, look at that attack and defense stat. And I, I'm wondering if it's just because it's his middle evolution. And the middle evolution of bug types are always like cocoons. And so they typically have higher defense. I wonder if it's gonna evolve into something maybe a little faster. I'm not sure yet. Maybe it'll get wings. Who knows what will happen. Um, but his ability, I haven't even actually looked at. And this is something I've got to start doing a little more. Actually checking this new stuff. So... Powers up ally Pokemon special moves. Well, that's interesting for doubles battles, but I don't really care about it all that much for me here. Uh, we still got uh, Peck Peck the Trumbeak. Uh, we've got Brion, Lil P. We've got Gruffers, the uh, Lycanroc. And we've got Kung Fu Fu the Stuffle. Now, I really want to evolve Kung Fu Fu, because I know he can evolve. Gruffers is fully evolved, and so that might mean it's time to drop him from the team and get some stuff in there that needs to evolve. Uh, Brion can evolve one more time, Trumbeat can evolve one more time, and Chargebug can evolve one more time. I know that there's still Pokemon out there that we have. I mean, I could I could bring Bouncy in here. Bouncy is the uh, is the bone sweet. So let's do that. Let's get Lycanroc out of here. We can't be using no strong Pokemon. What are we talking about? This is a blind playthrough. We got. Pokemon to evolve here, ladies and gentlemen. Pokemon to evolve. Uh, and we know that Nips the Fermantis can evolve also. So let's um, let's bring that back in here. And we know that something about Oracorio. Uh, maybe it's location that you catch it, changes how it looks or something like that. But uh, that's what we know right now. And that's where we're at. So when we ended last episode, it was uh, defeating the final trial and now we're being told to go to i opened up my pokemon menu because i wanted to use like i wanted to use hm fly but that's not what you do in this game they have finally fixed that broken concept of using hms on every pokemon that you have um and now you can kind of skip through that a little bit so this if we look up top this run over here was uh route eight which we've done this was wheela volcano park which See, I don't remember seeing all of this. Uh, so that's a that's an area that eventually maybe we can't go right away or forget. It, I'm flying there. I want to know what's going on there. That looked like a really big area, and I was like, I don't remember spending that much time in Wheela Volcano Park. I don't remember it looking that big, and it's kind of to the right, and Wheela Volcano Park was to the left. So now I'm wondering if there's just an area that I missed, just because I wasn't paying enough attention. 
off this way. There seems to be like a little beach and there's a man down there. How do I get down there? How do I get down there? It's not this way. See, I'm there's something going on here. Look at this. There's like a road. Here we go. Okay. What is this? Yeah, there's something there's something going on here. This is this is suspicious. I was just looking at the map there. There's an item here. Anything else? Top corner? Yep. Conspicuous rock. Is it on the other side of that rock? Is that why it's not letting me? Probably. Uh yes, I want to ride a Pokemon. Because I don't trust this secret little nook that I missed before when I was running through here. Can I go this way? No. There's a swimmer there. Let's talk to the swimmer. So, uh, <laughs> I guess we're not going to the Dimensional Research Lab just yet. But the Dimensional Research Lab is where they told me to go after I beat the last, uh, the last guy. We're going up against Swimmer Dakota, which is um, a girl's name. I think Dakota is a girl's name. I know a Dakota. It's a girl, not a boy. But I suppose it could be Boat. Boat Dem. Surskit is Water Bug. So Acrobatics and Spark would both hit this thing super effectively. So let's go for the uh, the Spark. Ooh, hit him with that Bubble Beam. A crit. I'm getting crit a lot in this playthrough. Surskit goes down. I get hardly any experience, so maybe I should have been here earlier. What's this? Do, do pitter? Do piter? Do pitter? Like the planet? <laughs> Look at the thing. It's like a little brain. <laughs> That's cute. Where? I want one of these. Where do I get a do? Where do I get one of those? Well, it's we're in the water here, so it looks like it's a water type. Well, that was a stupid way for me to test that. Of course, it's a water type. A swimmer has it. I should have checked to see if it had a secondary type. Because it kind of looked like a bug. So, I'm thinking that's probably a a bug water type. We're just exploring a little bit here. Just kind of checking out what's going on in this area. Thank you, Swimmer, for blocking my path. Lapras is huge. Can we go up this way? Yes, we can, but there's land ho. Oh, no, this is a drop down. So, we got to go up and around. See, now... There was an item over here earlier. I remember Stoutland saw it. A pearl? It's just money. I don't want that. Oh, I didn't put the uh, amulet coin back on someone. Right after I say, I don't want that. I don't want money. Uh, I, of course, actually do want money. Nips and Bouncy are going to need a little more assistance in getting to somewhere significant as far as... As far as being usable at the moment. I, don't, I, don't, I will not say that they are going to be very effective in this area, even though both of them are super effective against the typing in this in this zone. In this little nook that we are. Look, this is Igard Cube. Uh, so there's a lot of... Cena wants to talk to you. Zzzt. You've collected 10% so far. If you'd like to know what that number means, please come to the Aether Base on Route 16 on Ula Ula Island. You're getting warmer. Bon chance. There's a little Pokemon running around there. Let's have a look at what it is. It's probably a Diglett. It is a Diglett. Diglett goes down. We move forward in the playthrough. One thing I find really interesting is a lot of the Pokemon that I don't want to play with as etc. are older generation or Pokemon from previous generations. Um, and they... They're all really fast, and so the Pokemon I want to play with, new gen Pokemon, a lot of them are really slow. And so I end up getting outsped. Normally when you're kind of like trying to rush a game, uh, they'll you'll use basically really powerful, hard-hitting Pokemon that are pretty fast, so they'll outspeed everything and one-shot everything. And it's a really easy way to never take any damage and just skip through the whole, the whole game. They're kind of limiting that in this game because they make if you out level your opponent, you do significant, you get significantly less experience. So 
it doesn't really besuit you to do that. Alamomola finally goes down. That was, uh, that took a little long time. Wow, okay. <laughs> took a really long time, but he gives so much experience because I'm pretty sure experience, the amount of experience you get in addition to it being based on the level, uh, Pokemon that have more HP give more experience, which is why um, Pokemon like Blissey give so much. I think that's how it works. I could be wrong. Uh, but Bouncy is, as soon as I get him, I bring him like two battles. Oh my goodness, Steamy. Okay, so now <laughs> nicknaming him Bouncy once again. I'm horrible with nicknames. I always base them on the Pokemon I just caught, but Steamy is now nicknamed Bouncy instead of Bonsoir or whatever he was named before. Data added to the Pokedex, so he looks very cool. Bon Sweet becomes Steamy. Uh, what do we got here? Pure grass still. This Pokemon is always bouncing around energetically. Other Pokemon are attracted by its lively appearance and pleasant aroma. That's a nice thing to be attracted to something for. Uh, and wants to learn the move Double Slap. Well, anything's better than the move set that I got right now. Play nice is useless. So we'll move this thing forward. Uh, it's still... Razor Leaf and Double Slapper. A weird mixture. I'm going to look at this thing's stats. I'm curious. Call me curious. Call it to me. Name it at me. What it do? How to speak. Bouncy. Oh, he has a bright powder. Um, ability is leaf guard, which prevents status conditions under sunny weather. Stat wise, uh, s attack is higher than special attack. Special defense and speed are about the same. Uh, I wonder if that's because of my... I'm adamant, though, so that might be why. Adamant's lowering my special attack and increasing my attack, so it could be that both are the same. My speed is... not high, but, I mean, not low. And then we got Fromantis here, which we know evolves into uh, whatever the name of that Pokemon was that we battled in the last video. So these two are still working on... Becoming who they want to be. You know what I mean? This Pokemon also has Leaf Guard. Lots of Leaf Guards going on here. Uh, Klutz. So, does that mean my item doesn't work, right? Can't use any held items. So, probably not a good idea for this to be the Pokemon that I'm leading with that's also using my held item. So, let's, uh, let's put it on Bouncy. Let's move Bouncy to the front here. And let's take this Bright Powder. Bright Powder is a questionably competitive, viable item. Questionably, I say questionably, sometimes it's used in... in the GBA. I don't think I've ever used it, but it's it could be. Ooh, there's an item on the floor there. Antidote, that's kind of boring. You could have put anything there. There's another swimmer here. Let's battle him. So this is a, a cool little nook that we found here. What is this? Marini. What? What are you? What are you? Marini. He's, he's like a meanie, but he's marine-based Pokemon. Um, the spikes are making me think maybe he's part rock. We, again, we know he's part water. We already know that. I'm going to use double slap to see if he's part rock. If he resists it, we know he's part rock. He's not part rock, because that hit him neutrally. Uh, he's going to go for bite. Doesn't necessarily mean he's part dark. Sometimes Pokemon are just... Just have bite. Bite's a really common early game move. Like, so many Pokemon have it. Critical hit, but not super effective. And he just hit me with what? What move was that? That was not super effective against him. So we know he's water. Um, tons of things resist grass. So unfortunately, that's not super useful for me figuring out what he is. Except that it, it could mean flying. So let's bring in Kung Fu Fu.
Uh, and we're gonna hit him with a a brick break. And if it resi if he resists it, Rock Tomb might be better. Rock Tomb would hit a flying type super effective, and a ground type not very no 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 it's something that's got to resist grass. He could be bug also. Uh, that would mean that this hits him super effectively, so that wouldn't actually help me. Whereas Brick Break would be resisted if it's Bug. So let's hit him with a Brick Break. Not very effective, so could be a Bug type also. Oh, this could just be the evolution of Dewpider. And this will figure it out for sure. No. Okay. So that didn't hit him super effective. If it were a bug, it would have. So it's not bug. <laughs> okay, what resists fighting, but is... Okay, so we hit him with a fighting move and he resisted it. Which means it, it could have been flying, but then he was not hit very super effective by a rock type. So that's not it. Uh, it could be psychic. Could be fairy. Uh, it could be poison. Yeah, all of those things. So, uh, not a whole lot of help there. It had spikes on it. It could be poison. Poison water. I hope it's not. I hope they stop releasing repeats of typings that we've already seen and start actually releasing some new things. But we're learning. We're thinking. Going through things together. Swimmer Vanessa. See, all of these swimmers, they're all wearing clothes that like, an actual swimmer wouldn't wear. That is to say, like, a competitive swimmer. But she's got, like, sunglasses on. We continue onward. Checking out if there's any items around here with Stoutland. Corner? No. Oh, a TM. Okay. I was about to say, what's the point of this? Ooh, Thunder Wave. Well, I was I was curious what the point of this little nook area was going to be if, if there wasn't even anything... Excuse me, if there wasn't even anything to do here. So, one final check in this corner up here before we fly off into the wilderness. Oh, Diglett again. Shucks. <laughs> Charging forward here. Yeah, there's a little up area here. And an item in the corner that is a Max Repel. That's it. I came this whole way just for that. But uh, you know what? I'm just I'm glad I didn't skip. I would have felt bad to skip an entire area like this. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm glad I did this. Uh, I'm, we found the TM Thunder Wave. That's a that's an important TM, competitively speaking. We're done with Royal Avenue. We see on the map where we're supposed to go next. It's Hia Hia City. So we'll fly back here, and we'll go to the Dimensional Research Lab and see what's up. First, we're going to heal up our Pokemon. And while they're healing up, I'm going to drink some purple water. Mmm. Purple rain, purple rain. More water. Alright, next. We still got that Diglett Cave over there. But it seemed like it was too high a level for us to be there earlier, so I'm sure that'll direct us in that... Go, Nebby! Use... Use Splash! <laughs> Pew? He doesn't even have Splash? I was just acting like I was Geo, that's funny. You always seem to end up getting hurt, Nebby. So I never really liked Pokemon trainers or thought that I would want to be one myself, but when I saw Geo and How. Looks like they've thrown some door open that I always thought was closed. They stride straight through into the future. It seems so amazing somehow. Pew! 
I love a little Nebby. That better be a Pokemon that I can catch. The laboratory that studies dimensions and the professor is waiting for you. How are your trials? You must be quite trying to do three in a row. Uh, it was really tough. I think that explains it. The reason you look so content and understood by Steeny there, I mean, what? <laughs> oh, just by the number one Pokemon in my party. Interesting. Uh, yes, we've been... We came here before, but the door was closed. Uh, they wouldn't let us upstairs. And now, perhaps they will. How many floors are there? Yeah, third is the only one we can go to, so. It's a heat map on the screen there. Hey there, honey. Oh, hi. Who dis? This here is Professor Burnett. She runs the Dimensional Research Lab. And she's also my wife. Oh, they're married. Well, he's told me about you. She said you were the reliable sort. Okay. Three months ago, found Lily lying on a beach. Cosmog in her bag was unconscious. No how today. He's doing his own thing. But he'll, <laughs> he'll be the real deal someday. He could even be a kahuna, just like old Hala before him. You really think so? Oh my god, he was right there. So how was I... My friend, see, it's so... The Ultra Wormhole, sorry, I have to pause what I was in the middle of saying there because the Ultra Wormhole, extremely rare, but sometimes a hole opens up in the sky over Alola. It appears this rift leads to a different and unknown dimension. The reason that people think there may be a mysterious dimension is because of the legends of fearsome Pokemon appearing from the Ultra Wormhole. Pew! It's very weak. As proof? Oh, I see, but I can't ignore it. But there's plenty of evidence already in the Pokedex for the existence of different dimensions, right? Yeah. Um, Giratina's from a different dimension. Fearsome Pokemon. Even normal wild Pokemon sometimes attack people, right? But if the Pokemon that appeared from the Ultra Wormhole went way beyond that, they were called Ultra Beasts. And they were feared. If the stories are to be believed, the guardian deities of the islands fought desperately against them. But like I said... It's all legends and folk tales. Oh, legends? Legendary Pokemon? From the Ultra Wormhole? It's all legends and folk tales. It's hard to know how much is true. But I'd be very happy if, if I could somehow unravel the mysteries of the Ultra Wormhole by studying the dimensional disturbances. We've recorded several known relationships between Pokemon and different dimensions in books. You can find them on the bookshelf in this lab. Okay. What's up, little Magnemite? Oh, damn it. Rotom just said something. Bronzong. Giratina. That's what I was talking about. This Pokemon is said to live in a world in the reverse side of Ards, where common knowledge is distorted and strange. Polychia, total control over the boundaries of space and time. Uh, what else we got? Popo. That's a slowpoke. Uh, zone exists between reality and dreams, so uh, dream... Dream World Pokemon, Hidden Abilities. We've recorded several known relationships between Pokemon in different dimensions in book. You can find them on the bookshelf in this lab. Yeah, I read them already. What more, what more do you want from me? Oh, I guess I'm supposed to talk to Lily. Yeah. You want to know what happened three months ago? Well, I wanted to learn more about Nebby. I mean, Cosmog. So I decided to come speak to Professor Burnett. But I got lost along the way and ended up wandering about until I collapsed on the shore. She listened to my story, staying up all night, hear it all, and she even got her husband, Professor Kukui, to lend me his loft to stay in. She told him he'd help me investigate Nebby's origins, too. Professor Burnett has been so kind, she's still been trying to help me find a way to get Nebby back to its home. She's been like a real mother to me. Okay. It's a whole cave made by Pokemon, right? So he's talking about Diglett's cave. And Kakui, how about that, Geo? If Ultra Beasts are really out there, I wonder what kind of moves they can use. You finished all three of Akala's trials, woo. And now comes a big match against Olivia, the island kahuna. It's the biggest and baddest trial of them all here on Akala, the Grand Trial. 
Good luck. Olivia's house is past Diglett Tunnel. It's in Coney Coney City. But watch out for Team Skull. How does everybody know where Team Skull is? How you already said that to me? You're just repeating yourself now. Okay, so now we're supposed to go to Diglett's Tunnel. So it is a good thing that I didn't do it earlier. and didn't hop ahead of the game. So let's go down to the first floor. I'm not sure how long Diglett Tunnel is, so we're just going to call this a short little episode. It's not that short. A normal length episode, but... Uh, oh. Ultra wormhole. Kind of looks like a vagina. <laughs> what was that just now? It looked like a crack in the sky. Sure did. Hey, Geo, so you made it through all the three captain's trials yet? They should go meet the Kahuna Olivia. She lives past the town, past Diglett Tunnel. Diglett Tunnel is, let's see, from here, it's kind of near the PMC. I know where it is, how? And he's going to go get some Malasada because he's hungry. Or maybe he's thirsty. All right, and this will be a good place to call it. So uh, join us next episode, episode 23, where we explore Diglett Tunnel. And depending on how long the tunnel is, maybe we'll even get lucky and have a chance to defeat the Island Kahuna and be done with Akala Island uh, at the end of it all. But you know what? This, we're going to a city, Kony Kony City. So I might need a little time to explore Kony Kony City. We'll see how much time it takes. I'll see you guys on the next episode. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.